Hi guys, as part of today's lecture, we will look at a brief introduction of the ARM Embed platform, which is a new and revolutionary platform for embedded systems design in today's world. So, Embed is a platform which is built in collaboration with ARM. As you know that ARM is one of the world's leading microcontroller designers and the embed platform can be looked at at the website www.embed.org it's mbed.org and it is exclusively based on the ARM microcontroller design so let's understand what is this embed platform? As part of today's lecture, we will first understand the basics of the embed platform. Then we look at what different embed platforms look like. Then I will discuss very briefly how we can use different embed platforms. If you are using platform X versus platform Y, what are the different changes that you need to look at? and if you make those changes then how those changes will affect your program that said let's get started so if i say that this is an soc in the previous lecture you've seen that soc stands for system on chip which has an arm microcontroller or microprocessor could be both in the embed platform, we will be looking at the ARM microcontrollers. So, if there is an SOC with different components like the ADC, the DAC, and so on and so forth, and again, the fundamental basic is that the microcontroller is an ARM microcontroller, and we have a user which is either you or me and the user wants to communicate his or her design to this ARM based SOC. So that's where the embed platform comes into play wherein the embed platform has its own set of compiler so it has an online compiler it can be offline as well but most commonly we have an online compiler then there are code examples and in the previous lecture as I must have discussed they have different API's or application programming interfaces to use different components of the SOC. So now the embed forms a bridge between the user and the ARM based SOC. The advantage is that it reduces the programming complexity and it helps me build designs faster. As you see as part of this course that the design time actually goes down. That said, let's look at different embed enabled platforms. When I say embed enabled platforms means all these different boards have these SOCs which can take my design which is the user's design and can translate it into something that this this or any of these boards can work with well these are just three examples we have the lpc 11u24 which is by nxp semiconductors this is also by nxp this is the freedom kl 25z board which is made by freescale semiconductors 
if you want to see the whole range of embed enabled platforms you can take a look at that on the embed website where there are multiple vendors who have made an embed enabled platforms NXP is one of the leaders in that field you have Freescale as well then uh, ST Microelectronics has joined the bandwagon as well and you have Nordic semiconductors and so on and so forth so depending on the requirement of your design depending on the requirement you decide which platform you would like to go with either this one this one or this one or any of those designs that are spoken about as part of this course you will be either using this board or this board although these two boards are very similar in nature so depending on which board you will be using you would actually define and study the pin out or the pin diagram of that board which we will be covering as part of this course so a very logical question is how does one embed platform differ from another well it all has to do with the SOC the different components as part of the SOC will govern whether a embed platform is different from B is different from C so for example this particular SOC here is the LPC 1768 so from that perspective the SOC has an SPI module has a serial interface has an I square C interface has six channels of analog inputs so it has a six channel ADC it has the Ethernet component for an internet connection or on the LAN then it has the CAN or the control area network so again depending on what your SOC contains the embed platform will be able to perform those functions that said for example if we are looking at the freedom board this would be the freedom board then the freedom board contains the SOC which is the Freescale KL25 or actually 2X series in this particular case it has the KL25 SOC which is by Freescale so in that SOC you have the PWM outputs you have a serial interface you have five channels of analog input you have an I square C you have an SPI now even one thing that we need to note here is in this particular SOC the ARM controller is a Cortex M0 plus series family whereas in the LPC 1768 it is an ARM Cortex M3 definitely this is a higher performance microcontroller and SOC compared to this particular SOC but again the cost of the freedom board this particular freedom board which is the KL 25Z is less than the LPC 1768 so if you look at this board very carefully it has a pinout which is very peculiar to it it has a pin board on the inside and on the outside as compared to the LPC board which is just linear so depending on the board that you use you need to look at the pin out very carefully all right again the names of the pins are also very important the pins are named PX which is P5 P6 accordingly whereas in this particular case the naming convention is a little different you have PTA 
PTD, PTC, PTE. So you need to be careful when it comes to specifying these names. Again, this will be given to you as part of the board that you are using. So make sure you take a look at it carefully. Okay. So now that we've understood the basic differences between the boards, so to summarize, one is the SOC. So you need to look at the capabilities of the SOC. So what is the SOC capable of? So this particular SOC has an analog output. This one does not, but this SOC has Ethernet and CAN and this one does not. So depending on what's your application, you have to decide whether which board you would like to go. But again, as part of this course, we will be working on the basics. So we should be working with the analog. Then we'll be looking at the PWM. We'll be looking at serial, so on and so forth. And if we are using this board, then you'll be performing different experiments as per the course. All right. So now, if I have the same code, now it's quite possible that I have written a code for, let's say, the LPC 1768. So my code is working for this. Now I want to use the same code for the Freedom Board. How do I do it? So, well, first you need to check whether the SOC supports the same interfaces as the last one. If it does not, then the code will not work. If it does, well, then we are fine. So let's look at a basic example. A very simple LED blinking project, which you will be doing as part of lab one in the next lecture. So if you look at the main part of the code, it's all the same. The most important section that changes is the pin definition. Now on the LPC 1768, the LED is called as LED1 because if you look at the board very carefully, it has four LEDs. So this is LED1, 2, 3, 4. Whereas this board does not have four LEDs, but it just has one it has just one multicolored or tri three colored LED. So let's say if I want to use the red component of this particular board, so what will the program look like? So instead of using LED one, I would use the name LED underscore red. But these are terms or keywords which are specific to the board. Well, that's fine, but the logic that we need to apply is what if I would like to use something that is more generic like these pins which are used here. So for example, I have used these IO pins and now I want to use it here on this board. So let's look at another example. Again, before I move to this second example, I would like to highlight that apart from this part of the code, rest everything is the same. If you look at it very carefully, apart from this part, everything else remains the same. So it's quite easy to go from one board to another. So let's look at a slightly more extensive example. Suppose if I want to interface a seven segment display with first my LP LPC 1768. So I would connect up my wires, so on and so forth. And now let's say this program works. And now I would like to take this to the freedom board in a way that I have connected these terminals to let's say from PTA 16 to PTC 6. So I'm using these pins. 
I'm using these pins to interface my seven segment display. Now, assuming that this code works, I would like to transport this design to this board. Let's look at what the program looks as follows. This is just part of the program, but as I said, that it's the declaration which is most important. So if you look at it very carefully, this is fine, all of this is fine. The declaration part is most important, so the variable name can still be the same. So the variables remain the same, but what changes are the pin assignment. So what was P19 before now would be PTC6, what was P20 will be PTC5. So how does this actually look from the board's perspective? is very simple. So for example, if my pin number 10 is connected to P14, then in the second board, if my pin number 10, I wish to connect it to PTC12, then in short, whatever change comes here, you need to make that change here. That's quite straightforward. The rest of the program remains the same. No changes at all. It's quite straightforward. So as part of this course, we will see different examples and there also I will point out what are the changes you need to make. So I hope that the introduction to embed was clear. In this lecture, we discussed what is the embed platform. We saw that the embed is a great interface between the user and the ARM based SOC. Again, let me highlight that this is specifically for ARM based SOCs. And then we saw the different embed enabled platforms. We saw the differences in embed enabled platforms. The primary difference is the SOC itself with different features that and different components. And depending on your application, you must choose the SOC. And then we saw if we need to use the same code for different embed platforms. And then we saw the example, the basic example of LED blinking. And then we saw a more uh, extensive example of the seven segment. Again, we'll be seeing more examples as part of this course. Okay, in the next lecture, we will see how to get started with the embed compiler, the basic LED blinking project. So we'll start with labs in the next lecture. Thank you.